In this video, we explore the solutions and error codes specifically related to compressor failures in Gree brand air conditioners. The most common compressor error codes are Code E5, Air Conditioner Overcurrent Protection Code FE, Compressor Overload Sensor Malfunction Code H3, Compressor Overload Protection Code H7, Compressor Step Loss or Desynchronization Protection Code HE, Compressor Demagnetization Protection Code LD, Compressor Phase Loss Protection Code LE, Compressor Rotor Lock Protection Code P5, Compressor Phase Overcurrent Protection Code U1, Compressor Phase Current Detection Circuit Malfunction Two, compressor phase loss protection. Code U4, compressor reversal protection. The solutions to the aforementioned problems may include. One, for compressor overload issues, check for possible false alarms by verifying the connections of the overload sensor located on top of the compressor housing. Additionally, disconnect the compressor's overload sensor from the electronic board, inspect the wire's condition, and check for continuity on the sensor's pins with the equipment powered off. 2. For compressor overcurrent issues, make sure to clean the heat exchangers of the indoor and outdoor units. Verify the proper rotation of the fans, check that the equipment is receiving the correct voltage, and inspect all compressor connections. 3. For desynchronization, demagnetization, and phase loss issues, disconnect the compressor from the electronic board and, using a multimeter in the ohm scale, measure the resistance between the compressor pin pairs. The resistance values between each pin pair should be equal. Ensure the compressor connection cable is properly connected. 4. If the cause of the problem still can't be found, focus on the IPM Intelligent Power Module Electronic Module. To verify its correct operation, follow these basic diagnostic procedures. 1. Disconnect the equipment from the power supply. Remember that capacitors can store current. Use a multimeter on the DC voltage scale to measure across the capacitors and ensure they are discharged. 2. Locate the IPM electronic circuit. The IPM electronic circuit is covered by heat dissipating fins. Its pins are connected via three independent tracks and an electrical connector to the three compressor pins. 3. Positive power supply. Identify the high voltage positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the positive track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 4. Negative power supply. Identify the negative track from the capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit by tracing the negative track from the largest high voltage capacitors to the IPM electronic circuit. 5. Identify the output points UVW. These can be identified by following the tracks from the compressor connectors to the IPM electronic circuit. 6. Set the multimeter to the diode scale. 7. The IPM electronic circuit is internally composed of six IGBT transistors, each containing a diode that we will test. 
Let's start with the integrity test of the first three diodes. A. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the positive input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the red probe to measure the points U, V, W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be around 0.45 volts for each measurement. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. Let's proceed with the integrity test of the last three diodes. A. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the negative input of the IPM electronic circuit. B. Use the black probe to measure the points U, V, W. C. The minimum voltage activation values should be similar to those obtained previously. D. The measurement obtained between the negative supply and each pin, U, V, W, should yield practically the same reading. If everything seems fine with the IPM electronic circuit, you can perform the following test. A. Connect the electronic board to the power supply, taking the necessary precautions. B. Set the multimeter to the DC voltage scale at 400 volts. C. Place the red probe of the multimeter on the positive power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. D. Place the black probe of the multimeter on the negative power supply of the IPM electronic circuit. E. The power supply value will depend on your electronic board's power supply, expecting values around 150 volts for a 110 volt supply and approximately 300 volts for a 220 volt supply. F. If no power appears, the issue with the external electronic board lies in the power supply and not directly in the IPM electronic circuit. 